seven in my pocket I am a healing prophet Sees a promise in my garden I need to have a soft and sexual experience Yo! So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to prepare your grains using the wild bird seed tech. This is one of eight videos in my Generating Grain Spawn series that's going to be available on Patreon. So before we go downstairs and get started in the kitchen, let's go over a few things that you're going to need to follow along. Of course, you're going to need your bird seed. This is a 40 pound bag of Pennington's bird, wild bird seed that I got from Walmart. This will cost you about $25, all right? You guys are not gonna need that much grain. Um, I just need that much grain right now because I have a side project of six monotubs that I'm putting together. And I know from experience and 10 years of doing this that in order to put together six monotubs, I'm gonna need 40 pounds of grain in order to do that. The exact amount of grain that you guys are going to need for each one of your monotubs is going to be something that I discuss in length and in great detail on my Patreon. So need not worry. You're also going to need large Tupperware bowls like this. All right. You can get these for about two dollars a piece at your local grocery store. You're also going to need a one cup scooper like I have right here, all right? And remember, the goal here is to uh, prepare our grains, go through the whole process of pressure cooking them and sterilizing them and cutting up little pieces of our myceliated agar or our mycelium and inserting it inside of our jars with our grain, all right? so. If you're ready and you have your materials, let's go down to the kitchen and get started. We've opened up our bag of bird seed. Now let's go ahead and take our large Tupperware bowls and our one cup scooper and put them to use. What we're gonna do is add four cups of grain out of our bag. That's four. The reason why I only add four cups of grain in each one of my Tupperware bowls is because when I go to add water to my wild bird seed, I want the grains to be able to move freely throughout the bowl. All right, so let me go ahead and show you that now. Okay, so now we're about to go ahead and start cleaning off our wild bird seed. And the objective here is to cipher off sticks, sunflowers, cracked corn, or anything that's not the millet that we have in the mixture. What you're gonna see is the unwanted things that's in this wild bird seed mixture start to rise to the top as I fill the bowl up with water. You should see that here. You guys should see how the sunflowers, sticks and everything start to rise to the top. All right. Now, what you want to do is grab a strainer like I have right here. And you want to just pour off the extras, everything that's not millet. You want to pour that off. And as you do this repeatedly, you will soon be left with just the millet. It takes about three or four ciphers to get your bird seed exactly the way that you want it without sticks, cracked corn, bugs even, or sunflowers. All right, so this is the second cipher. And my water is getting clearer 
and clear. And as a note, you guys, you do not want to use water that is too hot. I wouldn't even use warm water. I would use cold water when cleaning up your bird seed because you do not want to strip away the nutrition that your mycelium is going to use for energy later on. All right. So as you can see now, now that we are on our third or fourth cipher, our water is pretty clear. And our bird seed has no sticks, sunflowers, cracked corn, or anything that we do not want in it. Now, pay attention to this part, you guys, because this is where a lot of beginner mycologists tend to go wrong, all right? So you do not want to leave so much water in this bowl. You don't wanna to leave too much water in this bowl. You want about you want the water right above the grain. Reason being is because if there's too much water left inside of the bowl, um, some of your nutrition could leach out with that water. So you want to keep the water just above where your grain ends inside of your Tupperware bowl. And last but not least, what we would like to do is take our calcium sulfate or gypsum, like what we have here. And you just want to add one scoop to every Tupperware bowl with your drink. All right. And you want to mix that up, mix that in really good. All right, grab a top, cap it off, and put it to the side, all right? And you wanna do the same thing with every bowl of grain. Remember, water not too hot, And you want to cipher off everything except the millet and yeah, you want to cipher off everything except the millet. All right, I have about 20 of these Tupperware bowls to prepare and I'm not going to make you guys stay <laughs> while I prepare all 20 of those bowls of grain, but you guys should definitely get the gist of what I'm doing here. And this is how you prepare your grain using the wild bird seed tech, like a boss. Cold water, you guys. You don't want to strip away that nutrition that is going to be used by the mycelium later. See how easy that is? I'm going to bring you guys back when I'm done with preparing all of my grain. Oh, yeah. One more thing about the calcium sulfate is that 
The reason why we add gypsum or calcium sulfate to every one of our bowls of grain is because calcium sulfate or gypsum serves as a nutritional supplement for mycelium. So it's just a nutritional so uh, supplement that helps the mycelium grow strong, vigorous, and rich. You want to add that to every bowl or uh, bowl of grain. All right. So I'm going to bring you guys back when I am finished preparing all of the grain that I have to prepare for my six monotubs. So we've cleaned up our wild bird seed. The only thing that's left to do now is allow for our grains to soak inside of our gypsum and water for 24 to 36 hours. This is important because what we're trying to do here is hatch those heat resistant endospores so that they don't come back and play a factor after we go to pressure cook and try to sterilize our grains. And take some advice from a 10 year mycologist. Guys, do not agitate these Tupperware bowls after you've set them, okay? So don't uh, come and open up the lids. Don't take a spoon and try to stir around or play in these in any kind of way because agitating these Tupperware bowls during this 24 to 36 hour period could actually prevent those endospores from hatching, all right? So we'll come back um, after 24 to 36 hours and I'll show you exactly what hatched endospores look like. All right, so let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. It's been 36 hours since we've started soaking our grain and voila, the bacterial endospores have hatched. Um, and that is a good thing because with them hatching inside of our Tupperware bowls, that means that it decreases the likelihood that they would actually hatch inside of our jars, which could cause contamination or which will cause contamination, my correction. But not to make the video too long, I just want to let you guys know what to be looking out for when you go to soak your grain and when you're trying to germinate those endospores so that they don't come back and ruin your grow um, at later stages. You know what I mean? You should see a thin film of, uh, you know, slime consistent uh, substance on your on the top of your water here all right um this is not a bad thing that's actually a good thing you know what i mean um now we move on to the next step but i just wanted to show you guys here what to be looking out for when you soak your grain so don't get freaked out if you open up your tupperware bowls and you see something like this this is actually good this is not a bad thing Okay, so that was steps two and three in the Generating Grain Spawn series using the wild bird seed tech. The very next thing that we're going to do is kill off the endospores that hatch during our uh, grain soaking, okay? All we're gonna need to do that is, of course, our grains, you're gonna need a strainer like this and just the stove. However, that video is going to be available on my Patreon. Um, guys, I'm very serious and passionate about this subject and it took me years to figure out um, how to do this. A lot of bumps in the road, um, trying to figure this out. So I ask that you guys please support me in my endeavors because I would like to do this full time. You know, mycology is something that has interested me for a very long time. And I promise I got you when it comes to growing mushrooms, 
um, there is not a lot that I do not know. All right. Um, so go on over to the Patreon, become a 5 a.m. mycologist, get this video plus more. I'm going to show you guys how to go from spore all the way to harvest. I'm going to show you guys how to go from clone to harvest. Just any and all topics are going to be covered. Nothing is off limits. And that also gives you an opportunity to collect, uh, connect with me on a personal level. So go on over to the 5 a.m. Mycologist uh, Patreon and sign up and hopefully I see you guys there.